We are thinking a lot. We're doing a lot of negative thinking. And on top of that, it's on repeat. So we're just going round and round and round with our stories. I don't want this. Da, 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 churning way. Okay. And that when we have big events happening, and maybe one on top of another, we can start to get what we call like a snowball effect. So one thought adds to another, adds to another, adds to another, and suddenly we get um, a kind of sense of overwhelm or catastrophizing as another name for it. So it just grows and grows and grows. And we get mentally stuck. So where do we get stuck in our head? Well, as you may have noticed, I asked you to, know, to talk about the past in your own mind for a minute. So we get stuck in the past. A lot of if only things have been different, if only, if only, if only. And this is where depression comes from, mainly, because depression is linked to wishing in the present moment things in the past had somehow been different so that they would then mean that you had a better present. Okay? We can also get stuck in the present in a very judgmental way. So I don't want this, I want more of that. Okay? So not really being accepting of our present moment experience, but feeling unsatisfied with it in some way. Or we can get stuck in the future, which is what's happening a lot at the moment, clearly, because we feel like things are really out of control. And we get stuck in the what if scenario. What if, what if we go into lockdown again? What if we will have to take a vaccine? What if, what if, what if, okay? So here's a few things we can just do very quickly to just recognize those two scenarios, the past and the future is that we can just notice our thoughts and come back to the present moment through the senses. So if you catch yourself wandering into the future, worrying, or flipping back into the past, going there, breathing, just that gentle noticing the breath can really, really just take you back into the present moment. So maybe just for a moment, let's just sit quietly, closing the eyes, lowering the gaze. <sighs> And just notice the breath. So you don't have to do anything special with the breath. Just notice it. Coming in. Going out. And just having a sense of the body sitting here. So literally just feeling the bottom on the seat. The feet on the floor. Just being aware of that pressure, that connection with this very present seat floor experience. And now I'm going to just invite you to turn your attention again to sounds around you. And notice if the judging mind gets in there going, I don't like this, I want more of that. And just see if you can just allow it to be sound, as though it was like music, that you're just listening. Okay, good. And again, you know, just reflecting for yourselves how you feel. The silence alone is a melody. What a beautiful bit of poetry that is. <laughs> yeah, that sometimes it doesn't take much to just come back to the present moment, like literally just stopping, being silent and noticing the sounds in the room. You don't need any special equipment. You know, you don't have to preface it with anything. Just that stopping and being quiet can just be enough. Yeah, it was so engaging, yeah. Just slowing down and being still for a moment can really, really help. And yeah, such a short meditation makes a big difference. Absolutely. So you can, you know, you can introduce these things to the beginning of the class. But you can introduce them anytime. Anytime you feel like people are losing attention, they're starting to get worried or stressed. You just go, okay, let's just notice our breath for a moment, shall we? Let's just feel the body sitting here. And let's just listen. And you know, this may seem a little unusual to your students to begin with. Um, and just, just, just keep trying and testing it, because they don't have to be very long. You know, um, they can just be a few moments. Even just saying sometimes, 
How do your feet feel right now? Can you feel your feet on the floor? It just makes the mind that's floating around up here go, oh, uh, feet, I don't know. Boom, they're back in the room, they're back concentrating again because they're being brought back to a present moment anchor rather than floating around in that past or that future. Okay. Um, because we can get really stuck in our thoughts, okay, and, uh, and our perceptions. So um, as this image demonstrates, you know, we can see things in lots of different ways. And actually, I want to just explore uh, this a little bit more with you and to come back then to the present. Okay, so this is quite a fun little exercise. Looking at these images, what do you see? So just write down what you see first of all in each one. Okay, you may see a second image later, but just the first one that you notice. Okay. Yeah, goose, bird, duck, woman. Okay, what type of woman? Is she old or is she young? Young woman, old woman, rabbit, old. So, interesting, right? We're all looking at the same image, and yet some of us see a duck first, some of us see a rabbit first, some of us see an old woman first, some of us see a young woman first. We're all looking at the same image. Can you hold both images, uh, as in the old lady and the young lady, together? Is there a way of sort of seeing both of them together or do they, do they keep just about? Some can, you can see both, yeah. So again, with, like, with the X and Y exercise, we have this thing called you know, perception, how we perceive things. Some people see something some way, some the other, and that neither are actually right or wrong. They're just ways of seeing it. But we can get really stuck in the way that we perceive things, the way we see things. I've got a few more here just to play with. Okay, so which is bigger? So we've got these two circles with the red dots in. So which is bigger in A? Is it the, the, the left or the right? Again, B, you might be wise to these already, but I have to say I was pretty wise to them, but the table one, I, I couldn't, is the table the same? Do you think it's the same? I couldn't believe they were the same. I had to go and physically cut it out and stick it on top. <laughs> They're the same. I promise you, they are the same. I, I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was tricked by that one. Okay, so it's just a bit of fun, but it's an opening to talking about like perceptions, the way that we see things. Now, why? Yeah, everyone's going, no, 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 none of them, are, they are the same. Different, different, different. Okay, so maybe later on, I think this, um, this uh, PowerPoint is going to be saved as a PDF, and so you, <laughs> you can get hold of it. You can print the page out, and then you can cut out the tabletop, because like I say, I promise you, they are the same size. Okay, because what we're going to do is explore really these, this, this, these thoughts that we're having and to see whether we can start pulling them apart again. Because, you know, we sort of go, well, I'm stressed because X, Y, and Z, because I've got to teach online. And, you know, we go, well, intrinsically, that is stressful, for example. I'm just pulling up an example. And that we can start to just pull 